lesson five is going to be a little bit of a leap for you. But like I told you, I think you did such a nice job on your quiz that I really think you're going to do well with it. Everything that you learn in lessons one through four will come into play for lesson five. And as you'll see by the word problems, they're a little bit different from what you've been doing, but definitely manageable. The first two problems, we break it down step by step. And as you get going with these and keep practicing it, you'll, you'll, you'll need to refer to the steps less and less. It'll start coming naturally to you, as you'll see. What I need you to do is like in any word problem, read it quietly to yourself, underline key pieces of information, the VIPs. Do that now. Now you want to come up? All you. Do you, do you need your paper? Or you can remember. Yeah. How many of you have that? Um, I would also include this too, the how many part. Otherwise, that was very nice. Okay, so our key pieces of information, 192 registrations. For every five passenger cars registered, there are seven pickup trucks registered. That's our ratio. And actually, what I'm going to ask you to do is I want you to put a double underline because this is what the question is really asking you, and this is what we have to figure out by using our models. So I'm going to put two underlines under that because we don't want to we don't want to forget what the question is. We'll get sometimes we get so buried in the examples and the models we forget. Well, what are they asking us? All right. So from this information, what is our given ratio? Let's put it in colon form. Let's simplify that. All of a sudden, I put a banana in my hand, and everybody's hands goes up. Go ahead, Will. Uh, that's a banana interception. It's an incomplete banana pass. We got to thread the needle. Uh, what's the given ratio, Will? Good. By the way, Will. Nice. Okay, so from there, our given ratio. <laughs> is always our tape diagram. So we're going to create a 5 by 7 tape diagram. 5 for passenger cars by 7 for pickup trucks. Everybody do that. So far, it starts out like what we've been doing, but here's where it gets different from the first four lessons. If you look back at the problem, normally all of our word problems up to this point would tell you how many passenger cars there were, or they may say how many pickup trucks there were, but they don't. What are they telling you? The total amount, which is what, according to the word problem? Which is how many? 192. 192. So it's not 192 of just passenger cars, and it's not 192 of pickup trucks. They're telling you, and I'd like you to make this note, that everything added together is 192. So what do you think you're going to do to figure out what the magic number is? Angelina. By how much? Why 12? You got it. And that's what step two is. Since the question is giving you the total of 192, find the total number of people from the tape diagram 
that own pickup trucks and cars. So if you add up all of the boxes, and unfortunately we have to flip to the next page. I don't like flipping back and forth, but we have to. Our total number of boxes, as Angelina told us, is 12. Let's write that down. And once again, those 12 boxes represent 192 people. So like Angelina told us, to figure out the value or the constant for each box, we're going to divide 192 by 12. And I'd like everybody to do that. If you do it, if you do it right, you'll have no remainder. Stop for a minute. I got to redo this one. I forgot where we left off. When we did 12 into 192, we got a constant of 16. Then to figure out how many there were of each vehicle, we took 16 times the amount of boxes for passenger cars and got 80. 16 times the number of boxes in the tape diagram for pickup trucks. 112. And then to check our work, these two numbers have to add up to 192. That's from our original word problem. So we're good there. And then we can show that the two ratios, the original and the new one, to get from here to here, we multiply by that constant that we found of 16. Not as good as the first time, but it'll have to do. All right, go to example two, read it out, read it, read it quietly to yourself, I'll call you up. Okay, who wants to come up? <laughs> Olivia, you got it. Want a bear? Take a bear. You know why? Because you... You get nothing! You lose! Good day, sir! Anyway, <laughs> thanks for being a good sport. So that's a tough sound bite to find exactly the way the way I wanted it.
All right, we're good. We're good. What is our given ratio? Everything needs to start. We need to we need to start every word problem by finding what the given ratio is. Franco. 14 to 5. Now, what we what I've done for this problem is I've actually made a tape diagram for you and there's a reason why. And you'll see why this is a little different. I wanted to make a tape diagram where the boxes were exactly the same size. Because you can now see visually, I'm going to put a line here, that there are how many more boxes for non-commercial vehicles compared to commercial vehicles? How many more boxes are there? Gabriella? There's nine. I want you to put a nine here. Kind of jumping ahead a little bit here, but I'm going to I'm going to go back and show you why that's important. If you go back to the word problem, this is not asking you or giving you the total amount of vehicles. What are they telling you, Antonio? They're telling you that there is 108 more not commercial vehicles than commercial vehicles. I want, very good, and I want you to circle the word more and then. That's going to clue you in that this is not asking for a total, but for a difference. A little different from example one. So now when we do steps to solve, the keywords are more and then. That's indicating to you that it's a difference. And like Gabriella told us, there's nine more boxes. So we want to figure out that these nine boxes represent how many more vehicles. Did I lose you? I might have. I might have. This is where I kind of lost students a little bit last year, but we're going to practice it. We know that these nine boxes are representing more non-commercial vehicles than commercial vehicles. But according to the word problem, the actual number, how many more non-commercial vehicles compared to commercial vehicles? Look back at your word problem because you underlined it. Jen, 108. So what I'll do, just to make this clear, I know you can't erase it. If you want to put a line through it, you can. Ready? These nine boxes represent 108 more vehicles. Think about it. You're now at the point that what you've done in lessons one through four, you've got to take these nine boxes and you've got to figure out how much each of these nine boxes are worth. You've got to take our 108 and divvy it up equally nine ways. What operation? Multiplication, division, subtraction, or addition? Division. division. So let's do that. And I'm going to fast forward again to the next page because they give you room to do that. You're going to do 9 into 108. Do that, and it should come out to a nice even number. Charles, what'd you get? Congratulations, you found the magic number. And the magic number is 12. Go, ba go back to the tape diagram. Once you find the magic number, that 12 is good for every box. Fill it in. You're almost home free. Once you got that magic number, go back and let's say, okay, I've done all this work. Let's see again. Let's revisit the question. What are they asking? How many of each type of vehicle, in essence, is what they're asking? So what do you have to do? What's our final step here? Well, um, 
possibly write it or repeat a position by multiple uh, by the box and so find the total of Okay, if we use multiplication, it's 12 times what for non-commercial vehicles? Well, and for commercial vehicles, 12 times what? You got it. Why can't we just do uh, 12 times 5 for commercial vehicles? We can just add 18 for non, I mean 108 for non-commercial Say it again, what? Uh, why can't we just do 12 times 5 for both of them and then add 108 for non-commercial? Like we do Show it to me again. 12 times 5, right. And 12 times 5, and then just add 108. You could. Five. You could. It's an alternative way of doing it. And I would be fine with that. Okay? But following the pattern of what we have been doing, it's always been constant times the amount of boxes in our type diagram. So I'm just kind of following that model. And what do you get? And then I'll show you how to do the check, which is also a little different. And be careful here, too, because really the hard part's done. You don't want to make a careless math error at this point. Forget to carry a 1 or whatever it might be. Just be careful with your 12 times. In, in, honest, in all honesty, 12 times 5 should be a math fact you should know in your head. 12 times 14, not so much so. But what do you get? Alexandra, what would you get? Right. And 12 times 5, you really should know your 12 times tables. At least up to 12 times 12. What do you got? Right. Here's how you check. A little different. My question. Do, should, I, should I be adding those two numbers? Yes or no? Just shout it out. No. What should I be doing? Subtraction because it's a it's a difference question. It's asking for more than. It's 168 minus 60. And your answer when you get that should show you the same number as you see in the word problem itself. What do you get? And it matches up. So far it seems to be okay, but let's just double check. Given ratio is what? I forgot actually. 14 to. So 14 to 5? What's the new equivalent ratio? Julia. We'll pick this side because it's easier. What am I multiplying by to get from 5 to 60? happens to be the magic number. So far it looks good. And it will work. <laughs> times 12 times 12 will work. Not only did you hear it, but it's on the recording too. <laughs> and you're good. Okay, so listen. A little bit more involved, but I think it's manageable at this point. Now, you have a, about six minutes, right? Um, and you're going to have to do this quickly because you don't have, we don't have as much time as I would have liked. But the, there's two more problems that I'd like you to try on your own with a partner. If you're not able to get to both of them today, that's okay. But if you're going to pair up, you got to do it kind of quickly because I need you seated and ready to go in about a minute or so. You don't have to work with a partner. But if you choose to work with a partner, you just got to pair up kind of quickly. Okay? All right, go ahead. 